Ms. Green is recognized for five minutes for questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Mr. Crane, for pointing out the most important things that people outside of this city talk about. While you all are paid with a taxpayer-funded paycheck, I, I want you to know that most Americans are concerned exactly about what Mr. Crane talked about. There's also many Americans, that, like in my home state of Georgia, that are still grieving the death of a young woman named Lakin Riley, who was brutally murdered by an illegal alien that came into this country in Venezuela, who had, who had injured a child in New York, was not deported. In my district, fentanyl is a real problem. It's a serious problem. Fentanyl doesn't discriminate based on politics or identity, sexual orientation or race. Fentanyl is killing people every single day. And it's also something that's extremely con concerning for everyone in my district. This is such a, an outrage to most Americans. And again, they pay all of our paychecks with their hard-earned tax dollars that our country is under invasion. It is an invasion. Now, while we believe that people should legally immigrate to America and follow the laws, all of our laws are being completely broken. And the fact that over 10 million people have come in our country and there's 2 million gotaways on your watch, 2 million gotaways that are capable of doing something that Mr. Crane just talked about, a terrorist attack, or the daily crime committed against innocent Americans, whether it's a, a tragic car accident that kills Americans in the car, whether it is a fentanyl poisoning, a murder that comes, the fentanyl comes from China to Mexico and comes into our country, or whether it's a brutal myrtle, murder like what happened to Lake and Riley. It's happening every single day. The CBP-1 app is the most fascinating thing to me. While Congress just banned TikTok, we have this app that our government funds that it's, it's shocking statistics. More than 459,000 individuals have scheduled Southwest border appointments with the CBP-1 app since January 2023. And 96% of those scheduled appointments with the app were issued a notice to appear and paroled into the country. 96%. The CBP-1 app is like a welcoming app. Welcome to America, come on in. You aren't vetting people. We've heard from witnesses before our committee. We heard from one mother whose daughter was horrifically raped and murdered, and the man that raped and murdered her daughter had gang tattoos and cartel tattoos all over him. And he, he was allowed in the country, and he brutally raped and murdered her daughter, and her daughter's boyfriend still has the voicemail on his phone of her last two minutes of life while she was, be, she was calling him in panic. And that vo voicemail is her being raped and murdered. This is, what, this is what our country is dealing with. And it seems to fall on deaf ears when we talk to witnesses like you. It's, un, it's unbelievable. Ms. Sabatino, according to DHS applicants for the CHNV program, quote, undergo a clear and robust security vetting, end quote. A, a clear and robust security vetting. In order to obtain advanced travel authorization through CHNV parole program, an individual provides biometric information, including a photograph, using the CBP-1 app. Now, on our committee, well, they're all gone, there are Democrats that signed a letter, literally signed a letter, saying that it's unfair, completely unfair that transgender migrants have to provide a photo. That's unfair to them. And they would like to take away the, the, the photo requirement on the CBP-1 app. Are all individuals in the CHNV parole process required to submit biographical information through CBP-1? Uh, biographic and biometric, uh, it's the photo. Can you imagine not having a photo? Uh, the facial biometric matching is a significant security enhancement uh, to the CBP-1 app. Are you keeping criminals out of our country with, with the CBP-1 app? 
Uh, the CBP-1 app really is just the tool to move the information, but we are taking the biographic and biometric uh, information and matching it against watch lists, our law enforcement da databases, travel data, criminal records, as well as our derogatory photo index. So do you sleep good at night? Like, do you know for a fact that you're keeping these criminals out of our country with the CBP-1 app? You're confident that you're keeping out rapists, murderers, cartel members? You're, you're terrorists, you're confident that you're keeping them out of our country? Congresswoman, as a 26-year career employee, I'm very well aware of the challenges that we are up against, and I sleep well knowing that our CBP officers and frontline personnel are doing their level best to protect the American communities. So CBP One app processes the information and, and expedites people from over 160 countries around the world into our country, and you sleep good at night and you're confident in the CBP-1 app. Uh, the CBP-1 app doesn't expedite individuals. It actually affords advanced information to our officers to do that robust vetting and screening and the facial, uh, obtaining the photos to do the facial biometric uh, match to our DROG uh, index. So you don't, you don't think already having the information in an app with the photo, when the, the migrants can come and pick a, select a date and time to come meet with uh, Border Patrol, that doesn't expedite the process? You're, you're saying that's not an expedition of the process? I think I can highlight a number of instances over the last 10 years where migrants showing up at our ports of entry without any advanced information quickly overwhelm our teams and then uh, redirect our teams from doing things like interdicting fentanyl or outbound operations, seizing weapons and currency that funds the cartels. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of different disciplines and responsibilities at the ports of entry. Without that streamlined modern uh, process, we would be solely focused on processing individuals who were required uh, to afford the opportunity to request asylum at our ports of entry. Sure, so maybe thousands of people showing up at, at one time at a port of entry or at the border along the way is, it would be considered an invasion. That's what most Americans are calling it. And most Americans are against the fact that their taxpayer dollars are having to pay for a handy dandy app that people can download and enter the information so they can be expedited into America. Uh, it's, it's outrageous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my I'm gonna go ahead and yield, thank you. The gentlelady yields.